Hello and Namaste, I'm Suresh Kunal and this is another video in the series of Computer Operator MCQ Practical Sheets and in this video I'm going to present the correct answers and explanation to the question of second sheet of this series. Ok, let me open the second set. Here goes my browser. And the address is mcqsets.com When you land on the front page, the home page Go to the home And here is a second sheet of computer operator MCQ practice This sheet contains another 10 questions for us to answer let me make it a bit easier to see. The first question in this set is the process of removing unwanted part of an image is called. It's asking for the technical term. The given options are hiding, cropping, cutting and scaling. So which one is the correct technical term for removing unwanted part of any image? And the correct answer is cropping. Let me show you how we crop images, whether in Office applications like in MS Word or any graphics editing applications. We use cropping to remove unnecessary part of any image. For example, let me insert a picture. So here I have inserted a JPG image, JPG file, and suppose I just want to display this part only and not these parts. So to remove the unnecessary part, I need to go to the format on the ribbon and select the crop. This cropping is to remove unwanted areas from the picture. So choose a crop, you will see the handles on the image changing and drag the portion that you don't want to show, that you don't want to use in your image. From up also, I want to remove this much and the corner, this button to cut off, to cut off the unnecessary parts. So, I want to crop the image like this. When you are done, click on the crop button. That's it. This is the image cropped. So, the correct answer of the first question is cropping. Now, let's proceed towards the second question. Question number two. The space kept between the margins and the start of a paragraph is called this is also the technical term for another. So the gap or the space between the margin and the starting of paragraph, whether we call it a gutter or a space before or indentation or line spacing. The correct answer is indentation. This indentation is the extra space between the margin and the text or the content. Or indentation is understood as the process of pushing the paragraph inside from left or right to create the extra space. Let me show you the indentation. Delete it. Uh, insert some random text just to demonstrate. So here you can see the margin ending at this point. Here at this point. The left margin ends and the text starts. But if you want to keep here some more space, even after the margin area, you can increase indent. For example, let me take this paragraph, put the cursor inside the paragraph and click indent, increase indent. So a little indentation is given here for this paragraph. Now this extra space, this extra space after the margin this is known as indent 
And what were the other options in the question? The gutter. Gutter is not the correct answer because this is the uh, some extra space inside the margin, in the margin, uh, for binding or stitching purpose. Uh, space before and space after are the space before this paragraph and after this paragraph, but it, it has nothing to do with margin. It's above and below. The, mar the gapping is given. For example, in the paragraph dialog box, we have got space before let's say 20 points and space after let's say 30 points then click ok so this gap now before this paragraph and this gap after this paragraph are the space before and the space after but it doesn't have anything to do with the margin so this is not the correct answer a line spacing it is the gap between lines inside a paragraph for example on the same paragraph I went to the paragraph dialog box and choose line spacing double. I increase the, the space between lines. So this space is line spacing and it has nothing to do with the, uh, the margin. So the space kept between the margins and the start of a paragraph. Here is the start of a paragraph and here ends the margin. So this space between these two is known as indentation. So indentation is the correct answer for this question. Uh, let's proceed towards the third, third question. A database language concerned with the definition of whole database structure and scheme. Okay, it's the technical term asking for the kind of database language that deals with the whole database structure and schema. Database structure means the fields, size, number of fields, uh, table. So database, this is non. Uh, this is the database structure. So what is the language? What's the kind of database language called to deal with the database structures and schema? The options are DML, DCL, and DDL. So DML is data manipulation language. DML is a data manipulation language. It deals with the data stored inside the table in database. If you need to add records or remove records, or if you need to change any value in the fields inside the table, then we use this DML, data manipulation language, like select statement, select these data from the uh, table, or, short, or the shorting the data, or inserting records, removing records, or updating the uh, or updating records in the table. For them, the commands, the statements we use are the DML, data manipulation language. And DCL is another kind of language in database which deals about controlling data control language, which deals about the users and the permission or the privileges like adding users adding new users uh, removing uh, some users or you assign these uh, capacities or these privileges to this user or remove any particular privilege from the user to do to do those kind of tasks we issue commands and those commands are under this dcl and there is another one, DDL, Data Definition Language. Here lies the uh, kind of commands that deals with defining the database, like uh, creating tables or the altering fields, changing the field size of table or changing the field type of table. So these kind of commands, creating uh, drop, altering, dropping, uh, these commands are known as data definition language. And our question says the kind of uh, language that deals with the whole database structure and schema is data definition language. Because we are working with the structure and schema, not with the, uh, not with the records, not with the data themselves inside table. So it's not DML, not with the users and permissions. So it's not DCL but the structure and schema 
is the DDL. That's the correct answer. And question number four. In one to many relationship, the table in one side is called and on many side is called. Okay, the question says we have got two tables connected with uh, one to many relationship. At that type, at that time, which table? The table on the one side and the table on the many side, what they are called. Now let me start MS Access and show you what this one side and many side is called. Here is my access database. Let me create a blank database with the default name. Go to the design view. Call it a student table and a class table. Okay. Let me make a class table. Here is the class ID. Here is the class description. Here is the building number. Here is the floor number and here is the room number. I'm just taking all the default fields, no matter. And suppose we have got the student ID of the number type. Let me close this file. I've got a class table. Similarly, let me create a new table. Create table in design view. Go to the design view. I'll call it student table. And here is student ID, student name, student DOB, their end time type, and father's name etc let me close and save this file okay I've got two two tables class table and student table and let's go to create a relationship between these two I need class table and I need student table now I've got student ID as a foreign field in a class table and I have got student ID as parent table in a student table. So we will create a relationship like this. To create the relationship between student and class, drag this primary field and drop it on the student ID of the class table. If we need, we can enforce the referential integrity let me create it. Now look at here. This is a relationship. And on the left hand side, we have got one. And on the right hand side, we have got many. So this relationship says that the one student in the student table may have many class information. So now, what is this table called? And what is this table called? This was the question. It's the main thing that the question is asking us on our question number four. So, whether this one side, this student is a child table and this is a parent table, or whether the student is a parent table and class is a child table, or the student is a sister table and class is also a sister table, or the student is father table and class, the son table. Which one is correct? The correct answer is parent table, parent and child relationship. So the table in one side, this one, is called a parent table, and the table in the many side, this many side, is called the class, uh, the sorry, the child table. So parent-child relationship is there between the student and class table in this example. So the correct answer is parent and child. Proceed towards the question number five. Any data or instruction entered into the memory of a computer is considered as input, output, 
stories or information. The correct word for this is input. When a data enters into the memory of a computer, it's called input. When it processes that data and produces some result, it's called information. When that information is sent to the user, it's called output. And when that information sent to the storage, sent to the hard disk or any other secondary storage devices, it's called storage. So input is any data or instruction entered into the memory of computer. The correct answer of question number five is A. Proceed to question number six. In computer network terminology, the process of combining multiple signals into one signal over a shared medium is known as, this is something like, we have got so many sources of data coming inside and we need to send these data to some other destination through a common shared medium. Then what is the term used to bundling them? The options are mixing, grouping, marxing, and funneling. Here the technical term is moxing or multiplexing. We have got moxing in the option, so this is the correct answer. A moxing means to combine the data or the signals from various sources or various uh, signals are combined and made one single signal so that it can be, share, it can be sent through the uh, single medium. Like uh, in our home also, we watch the television and cable TVs. They have hundreds and two hundred channels distributed, but all of them are through a single cable, single coaxial cable or single fiber optic cable. So how it is possible to send so many channels on a single cable, on a single a transmission line? It's because of the moxing. All those channels are uh, moxed. All those channels are combined into a single signal or single stream and sent through the transmission line. The correct answer of the question number six is moxing. Now, question number seven, Microsoft Ace is an example of word processing application, image processing application, web browsing application, and website development interface. Well, Microsoft has word processing app, uh, application, MS Word. MS Word is there for the uh, for the word processing and for image processing we have got Microsoft Photos uh, or the uh, Microsoft Photo Editor and that's for the image processing application from Microsoft a web browsing application uh, earlier it used to be called the Microsoft Internet Explorer uh, to browse the web uh, but uh, recently Microsoft launched its Ease uh, Microsoft Ease which is a web browser application and uh, website development interface for website development Microsoft had a front page I don't know whether it's still continuing or discontinued uh, anyway the uh, Microsoft is is a web, web browsing application and option C is correct for this question for question number eight getting data from a cell located in other workbook is uh, option A, addressing, B, referencing, C, linking, and D, embedding. Okay, uh, whether it's on the different workbook or on the same workbook or on the same worksheet, whatever it is, getting data from other cell is simply referencing. The cells, the cells in a sheet are numbered, are named, with column name and row numbers like C15 or D8. What is this D8? This D8 is a reference of the cell. It's on the column D and row 8, D8. So it's a cell reference. If you need to get data from any other cell, you can just say equals to D8. Press enter. Whatever the value is there on the D8 cell, you will get it on the current cell. Let me open the Excel. Okay, here is my Excel application on the left hand side. Let's suppose on the D8 cell, there is 531. 
Now, if you need that data anywhere in any other part of this worksheet or another worksheet or another workbook, whatever, you can just say equals to and the on the D column on the eighth row, I need the value. So equals to D8, press enter. You got this 531 here. If it is on the next sheet, some other sheet, you say equals to on the sheet one, on the D column, eighth row. Look at the formula bar, sheet one, exclamation, D8. Here, this is the reference. It's a referencing. We referred to the sheet one and D8 column, and we got the 531 in this, uh, in another sheet. Similarly, if you have an, an, another workbook, control N for a new file, like this. So I need uh, the value over here. This is my book two, this is another workbook, and my value is on the book one, sheet one, D8 cell. So here I need that value. I can refer, I can put the reference here as equals to on the book one, on the book one, on the sheet one, on the cell D8, I need this value. So look at the formula bar, on book one, sheet one, D8, press enter, you got that same value in other file or in the Excel also. So this way getting data from some other workbook into this one, we simply do referencing. All we need is to specify the reference to reach up to the value. So the correct answer of question number six is referencing. Question number nine, which of the following is true for equals to sum C3 to D8 and F3 to G8? Whether the, this formula will return error or it returns the total of all the cells in the both range. We have got two ranges inside the sum function, C3 to D8 and F3 to G8. So whether it will return the total, the sum of both of those range or will it return only the first range and ignore the second range? Or the last option is it will return the sum of the second range ignoring the first range. Which one is the correct one? The correct answer is returns the total of both the cells in the ranges. Because when you use sum function, like equals to sum, you can say I need the sum of A1 to A5. This is correct. Or A6. This is correct. It will return the total sum of this range. Fine. No problem. Because there were no numbers here, we got zero. Let me put some numbers so that it will appear more clearer to you. And suppose I also have some other numbers here. One, 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 one. Four ones are there and on this cell. A1 to A6, we got the total of this range, comma. And we got the total of this range also. Another one is B12 to B15. And we press to enter. What happened is the 26. Earlier it was 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Earlier how much it was? I forgot, 22. Okay. Earlier it was 22 and now it is 26. Only the sum of A1 to A6 is this one is 22 and when you add B12 to B15 it became 26. So if you list the ranges inside the bracket separating with comma this way then it will return the sum of all the cells the sum of all the cells in between both those ranges. That's why the, uh, the correct answer of question number nine is option B return the total of all the cells in the both ranges. Now question number 10, which of the following tag displays an image in a web page? We need to display an image in the web page, uh, web page and need to determine the correct uh, tag and also attribute. The option gives the attribute also. On option A, we have got PIC tag with SRC uh, attribute. mcqcs.com.jpg is the name of image. Option B, IMG SRC. IMG is the tag. SRC is the uh, the attribute, source attribute, and the source is specified at mcqsets.com.jpg. The third option is PIC, and 
loc attribute equals to the same file name fourth option is img tag with loc attribute the file name is same among these four options the correct one is option b img tag displays the image and src attribute says which image it has to display other pic we don't have any tag called pic and with img we cannot we don't have loc attribute loc attribute is not there if you want to see how it works i can show you it on the browser let's open uh, html live editor uh, real-time HTML editor okay any any of these like here I can write the uh, HTML code uh, PIC src equals to mcq says.com.jpg it did not return anything similarly img src equals to mcq says.com.jpg see when i press tab when i pressed tab or when i went to the another line after this you see a small image displayed over here because this mcqsh.com.jpg is not on the current location the reference is not correct so it couldn't display the image itself but anyway the image placeholder is displayed in this case but for the first option there is no image placeholder so we come to know that PIC is not the correct tag and SR's IMG is the correct tag. Now with IMG tag, if you use LOC attribute, LOC attribute, then it happens nothing. Again, the placeholder is removed, is disappeared. So for question number 10, option B, this one, is the correct answer well these were the 10 questions on the second set and I got so many friends answering uh, these questions in the comment form in the website and you also can visit the site go to the page and go to the bottom and add your answers in the comment form write your name email address the website is not necessary you can leave it blank and post your comment okay that's all for this video i'll come with the third sheet of this uh, practice session until then bye bye